A recent arrest of a man in Bentonville is sparking conversation with our viewers on social media about where the line is drawn between freedom of speech and threats to the public. Reese Sullivan was arrested last month after the FBI became aware about threatening rap lyrics he wrote. And Fox 24's Anna Darling talked with an expert and reached out to Sullivan's attorney to learn more about the nuances of this case. Police arrested Reese Sullivan on November 2nd for allegedly putting threatening lyrics in his music that he published online. He claims it's his rap persona, but the Bentonville Police Department arrested him for first-degree terroristic threatening. Our viewers are asking the question, is his speech protected or should it be punished? The tension here is public safety and freedom of expression. Danielle Weatherby is a professor of law at the University of Arkansas who specializes in the First Amendment. The First Amendment is a constitutional provision that protects citizens' speech, exercise of religion, and interference by government actors in those realms. So it prohibits unlawful government censorship and control over private speech. She says hate speech is is protected by the First Amendment, but when that speech crosses a line from expression to threats of violence, and this is a place where the First Amendment does not protect freedom of expression. A probable cause affidavit says in August, the FBI National Threat Operations Center received an anonymous tip from someone who was concerned about Sullivan's rap lyrics. It says the lyrics contained numerous threats of violence across multiple uploads. The threats included, quote, details of a plan committing a school shooting, bombing public events, shooting and raping children, and killing people of a specific ethnic group. Weatherby says the intent behind a person's words are the key to this case, and it's something the Supreme Court considered this past summer. The speaker's intent does have some bearing on whether the government's act of stepping in and silencing the speech comports with the First Amendment. In Sullivan's case, the FBI searched his home in October and did not find any weapons or explosives. Sullivan told investigators his music is his character and not himself, and he had no intention of actually committing any of the violence that he rapped about. Weatherby says the nature of the anonymous tip to the FBI is important when asking if Sullivan's arrest was justified. If an objective listener would hear the speech and be really truly concerned, legitimately that violence was likely to ensue, then law enforcement has to step in. Sullivan is being represented by Kimberly Weber. In a phone call about her client's case, she told me while she has not heard Sullivan's lyrics, she believes this is a far-reaching First Amendment case where the evidence will be highly scrutinized by the Benton County Prosecutor's Office. She emphasized Sullivan's lyrics were not a manifesto, that he has no intent or means to act on his lyrics, and he does not have any negative thoughts towards any minority groups. And in this day and age where we're dealing with school shootings and massacres um, of, a, of a major scale, we have to take this kind of speech seriously. Whether or not this was truly a true threat within the context of the Supreme Court precedent is ultimately a question that will have to be decided by the courts. The Benton County prosecutor will decide whether or not to move forward with charges in a hearing set for Monday, December 11th. Weber believes there is a chance the charges will be dropped against her client. We reached out to the Bentonville Police Department and the FBI for comment, but both agencies declined commenting at this time. Reporting in studio, Anna Darling, Fox 24 News.